I'm Chris Burns, and welcome to The Network, where we connect into a matrix of newsmakers to get to the heart of an issue. And watch out, they've got to answer in 25 seconds or less, or else. Let's take a look at that issue right now. Syria's people power uprising turns into open warfare. After months trying to crush a largely peaceful Arab Spring movement, and after more than 5,000 dead, the Syrian regime is now battling an increasingly violent insurgency. Army defectors join the Free Syrian Army after refusing to fire on civilians who persist in their protests. Arab League observers are pulled out, unable to stop the bloodshed, and criticized as providing cover for the regime of President Bashar al-Assad. As the insurgency grows, so does the role of armed Islamic extremists and the threat of a devastating civil war. At the UN, Russia rejects talk of a Security Council resolution that could impose sanctions and perhaps lead to intervention. Western countries who led a much debated campaign of airstrikes that helped bring down Libya's Muammar Gaddafi are reluctant to get involved in yet another Arab conflict that could become a quagmire. Now, wired into this edition of the network is uh, here from the European Parliament, Véronique de Kayser, a Belgian MEP, a member of the Socialist Party and the Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee. Also here in Brussels, uh, Rudolf El Kare, a Lebanese-born political science professor and commentator on Arab world affairs who sides with the Syrian opposition calls for a change of regime. And in London, Amar Wakaf, a leading voice of the British-based Syrian Social Club and also a member of the Ba'athist Party. He calls for reform, as well as the club does, and not for regime change. Let's start uh, with a question to all of you, starting with uh, Véronique. Now that we've seen that Security Council resolution rejected, vetoed, uh, by uh, Russia and China. Where do we go from here? Do we look at intervention? Do we look at sanctions? What do we do now? Uh, certainly uh, no, no military intervention for me. Uh, we have two models, Libya or Yemen, uh, which is to say military intervention or diplomatic efforts, negotiation, and finally a change of regime in, in okay. Yemen. Uh, uh, my choice is Yemen. Okay, Amar, how do you see this now? What do we do? How do we get out of this? Well, basically, <clears throat> the government has taken an initiative uh, through uh, or illustrated in uh, President Assad's latest speech about four weeks ago, uh, in which there is a political solution and there is a, a security solution. Uh, they gave an amnesty to, uh, to the armed groups to surrender their okay. weapons, and that expired on the 31st of January. And I right. think they're starting now to impose, to impose government, uh, uh, you know, uh, hand on matters. Okay, but the, the, the bloodshed continues, Rudolf. What do we do now? How do we stop that bloodshed? Uh, we must see very, very deeply, understand very deeply what it means a double shot veto in the United Nations. I think okay. there is a new balance in the area, and that will be influent on the situation inside Syria. Okay, well, let's, let's take a look at sanctions, though. What, what do you think, of Veronique, should be imposed, what sanctions should be imposed that could perhaps push the Syrian regime into reforming or perhaps even a regime change? Sanction against the regime which could uh, jeopardize all okay. the structure of the, the regime. But I know that it's long, it's a difficult path, but to me a military intervention would be a disaster. So we have to choose between two not very good uh, solution, but it's better to, to use uh, sanction and diplomatic effort and to try to change the position of Russia and China. And I think that Europe has to make all the effort to do that. Okay, Rudolf, in your dream o vision, what kind of European role would you like to see in this? Uh, I uh, was expecting from Europe since several months uh, a mediator role in the area. Unfortunately, the question of sanctions was uh, again used against Syria and we saw in the uh, last years what happened with sanctions. Sanctions are the worst solution for such, such, such complicated situations. <coughs> okay, but if sanctions don't work, if sanctions don't, no, they minute, never if work. sanctions don't work, then, then, the then what, what's left? Never what is work. left? Intervention? Military intervention? The sanctions never work. There is only political solutions which can work. And the political solution cannot come uh, except from the 
Syrian people itself. This okay, is the way I'll... to build democracy. Okay, Amar, what, how, what, what kind of a role do you think maybe Russia could play in this? Do you think they might be a player and be able to mediate something here? Well, the role that is being assumed currently by Russia, by Russia should be actually uh, assumed by Europe, which is the intermediary role, the constructive role, and the proactive role. Because sanctions, as Dr. al qarah said, will lead to nowhere, really. And if we are uh, having the objective of regime change, then we might think of sanctions. But if we are having the objective of the you know, prosperity of the Syrian people and the democracy of the Syrian people, we should think more proactively. Right. OK. But let, let, let me pitch this back over to Veronique. I mean, it, how are we going to pressure if sanctions don't work, if we're ruling out military intervention? What's left as far as pressuring the Syrian government? I think we have to combine sanction with diplomatic pressure. Okay, what and kind of sanctions? What kind of sanctions should we do here? From an economic point of view, the regime needs money. And sanctions are, could be effective, but in the long term. And combined okay. with diplomatic uh, pressure, it could be a solution. Okay, Rudolf, uh, what, do you, what do you see here? If, if we don't get people to the table, what is the danger of a civil war, a real civil war here? Well, the danger is not only uh, uh, civil war in Syria. The danger is in the whole area. The way they are managing the situation, trying to create conflicts between communities, whether the, what is asked, what is important, is changing the societies, it may lead to a great conflagration in the, in the region. That's why I insist on a political solution on the Syrian level and in the area at the same time. And you mean, you mean a change of regime there, right? No, not changing regime. This is only the Syrian people who can decide that. May Amar, I, I mean, what, what kind of political May solution? I... Uh, sorry, go, go ahead, uh, Veronique. Yes, I would ask a question to Adolf. He, he said no change of the regime uh, if the people, etc. But does it mean that there is an impunity uh, of the crime which have been committed uh, recently. Not at all. Uh, Bashar Assad is but, responsible. But, but, we don't dear, dear want Veronique. impunity. Yes. Okay, so, so she's me, talking about maybe a war crimes trial, no, right? No, ju just, uh, just a second to answer to, uh, the question to Veronique. Why don't we take in consideration the report of the Arab observers? Why we put it down? Why we don't take this uh, 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 report and build on it just to reconciliate the different parts of the uh, Syrian society? This is okay. the main thing. Okay, uh, Amar, Amar, what's, yes. what is going to try to move the regime into reforming? How are we going to do this to try to bring about elections? Is that possible, do you think? The majority of Syrians do not want President Assad to go, and that is according to an opinion, a recent opinion poll by Yugov Siraj. And point number two, that a large number of the civilians who were killed are actually pro-Assad civilians and pro-government civilians. And this point was illustrated by the Arab Monitor's report, who I think the Syrian government happily showed them in, in order to show exactly what is happening on the ground, because what we have actually is that what Syrians see okay. and experience on the ground is quite different from what Europeans hear in the media. Okay, but last, last question to, to, to Veronique. The outcome of this, how will that bear on, on the, the, the wider question of Arab Spring with other author, authoritarian regimes? How could the outcome of this conflict affect other potential Arab Spring movements? Um, it could affect uh, all the movements if we have a military intervention which is from outside and not supported by, by the people. To me, uh, each of the country of the Arab Spring has its own history, its own development, its own evolution. And I have the hope with many, many Syrians that this will be part of the Arab Spring and not the winter. Uh, uh, the winter, uh, Arab winter. Okay, Veronique, and to all of you, we're going to have to leave it at that. A lot is at stake here on this, in this conflict. That's all the time we've got for now. I'd like to thank our guests, Veronique de Kayser, Rudolf El Kare, and Amar Wakaf. I'm Chris Burns, and until next time, thanks for connecting with The Network.